Glenn, it feels like forever since we did this. How long has it been? Uh, it's been forever since we've done, done right? this. Right? It feels like months. It feels like, like I don't know. It was uh, June 15th. So it's been, it's been, <laughs> it has been over half a month now. See, now that explains all the emails, right? Because I didn't realize it'd been that long, but yes, I know, there've been holidays in there. And I think, yep. I don't know, you got married or something like, I don't know. There's just like lots of stuff that's happened in this time. I don't think I've done that, bit. but no, I don't know. It was, I just see, it feels, why has it been so long? What was last week? This week's the holiday. Well, somebody was traveling last week when we were oh, scheduled. That's to record. what it was. Yeah. I was, uh, I was out of the country. But you'll be happy to know or not that uh, the travel ban did not affect me, mm. um, which is strange because, you know, I'm a middle-aged white guy, so I thought I was, you know, prime target for that. <laughs> but, uh, nope, back in the country, and here I am. <laughs> That's what it was. I was out all week. Awesome, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, now I'm back. Hey, happy 4th to you. Happy 4th to you, too. Yeah. Happy birthday, America. That's right. And America. another 200 and whatever more years of this great experiment. Yeah. Hey, I got a question. It's not on the agenda. So, um, but because you're a guy that knows like all kinds of stuff. So, and somehow I'll figure out how to weave this into a Disney topic. But uh, have you heard of the Liberty Bell? Remember that thing? I have heard of the Liberty Bell, yes. Yeah. So, I don't know. You got, um, I don't know, somehow today I saw that, you know, the last time it was rung was uh, 18, whatever, whatever. Yes. Um, and, and they don't do it anymore because, you know, the crack in the bell, right? Mm -hmm. And it's always bugged me about the symbol of our country that we have this, the, the Liberty Bell with this crack in it. Cause isn't it like you're just accepting, like, yeah, there's a pretty big flaw in this whole system, but we're just going to go with it anyway. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like back then I think I would have said, nah, let's make another bell. Cause we don't <laughs> want the, a cracked bell to be the thing. Right? Yeah. So um, why did, I really don't know. Why, why did it crack? It would just, you know, uh. Yeah, just you from... know, they did. They didn't have Chinese manufacturing back then, so it was just it was a weak spot, I guess, in the cast, right? Because it was okay. They made those out of it. They've got a big lead cast, probably, and they right. pour a bunch of molten metal in it, and and then it forms. And I guess just you know, probably that probably just happened all the time. You know, eh, bells crack. What are you gonna do? Hmm. But uh, but it's a Liberty Bell, right? It's the it is. That's so weird. So you know what they do instead of ringing it, they they, they tap on it thirteen times. Oh, okay. And that's another thing. 13's and I never thought about this. 13's often considered an unlucky number, right? Yeah. And yet and yet our whole thing is kind of set on 13 with the colonies and whatnots. Do you do you know, know why it's considered an unlucky number? Oh, I did. I forgot. Tell me again. Tell me Uncle Glenn why. Well, it's it's really from uh the Bible. Um Okay. So in the Bible you Probably know, Deuteronomy, right? Numbers. It's, I always think it's De Deuteronomy. De Deuteronomy. <laughs> numbers symbolize yeah. a lot of things. It right. actually uh, comes from Revelations, but okay. um, the number <laughs> okay. six uh, uh -huh. usually represents uh, the devil. Yeah, and that the number seven yeah. usually represents uh, Jesus or God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and so it's the battle between those two. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you add six plus seven, it's thirteen. Mm -hmm. So that's. That's the wait, but then that should be that. that should be neutral. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be bad. It should be, you know, the light <laughs> side and the dark side neutral right. out. And you, you're kind of nowhere. Well, I just, I just, I don't know, man. But that's the that's pretty that's, the origin pretty, that I that I uh, <laughs> that I learned. That is pretty weak science. I got to tell you, <laughs> it is. I agree. It is pretty weak science. <laughs> I got to say, and I don't think I've ever told you this. I for one summer. I totally got absorbed into numerology. Did I ever oh, really? This? No. Oh my god! So, because um, I was I was friends with somebody. You know, I was a teenager at, at this point, but I was I, you had friends of the, the family, whatever. They're kind of uh, probably in their late twenties. Anyway, they'd really gotten into kind of the new agey stuff, and so they had gone to like some convention, I guess, whatever the new agers do when they when they, uh, you know, I guess it's a coven. I don't know, whatever they do when they sure. get together. And so she came back with like all these books on stuff and there's one on, on numerology and you know, uh, numbers, just phew, numbers. I love numbers. Sure. So yeah, whole summer I went through it, but, um, and later I realized it was all junk, especially <laughs> when, you know, there was so much that was based around the number nine because, mm. you know, three threes, completeness, balance, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of it pointed to the nine planets in the solar system. Mm. Like, well, guess what? Now we have eight. So, <laughs> so it kind of suck it, Pluto. The whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so so much for that. So 
Anyway, yeah, I don't know how we got on this topic. <laughs> hey, let me steer this back to Disney's because I thought you, about please. with the bell. So what? It, what is the um? What's the bell that's in front of the uh, uh over there by the uh, Liberty Square? What is that bell they have on like a yeah like a, a rolling thing, whatever that is? Like yeah, so it's actually it? a uh, it's a replica of the Liberty Bell. It's actually oh, okay. made from uh, a cast of the the actual Liberty Bell. Hmm. So I know we didn't plan this, so you may not know, no. but I mean, did did like. Like Disney acquire that from somewhere? Did they did they have it made specially? Is there one in Disneyland? Like, there is that? not one in Disneyland. No. Okay. Hmm. Something special for us. Okay. It is. Yeah. And we'll we'll actually t- touch <laughs> on that a little bit uh, a little bit later in the show. Oh oh interesting. I didn't even know that. See, I'm all like patriotic. I love yeah. I love this stuff. Even sure. as I'm frustrated with our country right now, I um I grew up during the. Uh, the bicentennial bicentennial era, sure, and went to Philadelphia during that time, and just I love the whole colonial times, and you know, make America great again. That's what I say. Colonial times, tri corner hats, which is another thing. If you can find the reason to me why tri corner hats became the fashion, like why, <laughs> why <laughs> well, that? Why does anything become a fashion? Well, I don't, but you know, back then were they that? It's, and probably not. I mean, they're like Puritan people, right? I mean, were they that? Oh, I think this tri corner hat looks fab. I'll go with this. Like, I don't think so. So there must be some reason for it. Right? Yeah, some functional reason. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, so Good I actually you. have an answer for the okay. Liberty Bell. I was just giving you time to thank, do your googling. Thank you. In 1976, uh, 50 replicas were cast and molded in honor mm-hmm. of the the country's 200th birthday. Mm-hmm. Each state would receive one would receive one and place it wherever they wanted. Uh, however, the state of Pennsylvania had a problem. They have the original <laughs> Liberty Bell. We already got one, <laughs> right? So, uh, so Walt Disney World realized Pennsylvania had a replica and uh, asked if they could have it for Liberty Square. Pennsylvania agreed, and on July fourth, nineteen eighty nine, the replica Liberty Bell was uh, hoisted and lowered into its permanent spot inside Liberty Square at the Magic Kingdom. Where it still sits today. There's so much about that I never knew. So, like, I didn't realize it was uh, that recent, 89. Yeah. Like, wow. Okay. I thought it was there since, you know, pretty much opening, but. Oh, no, no. No. No, the Liberty Tree has been there since. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know that. I love that tree. Yeah. I love that whole area. I, I, I could do like a whole park. Yeah. It's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a great area. It's quiet. It's, um, quiet. Quiet. It's a quiet little area. <laughs> uh, compared to Fantasyland when do you go or there? Frontierland? I guess. Uh, really? So I always feel the opposite. I always feel like it's so it's so jammed. They have so many nooks and crannies where you can go and sit. Like we sit. used to go and sit behind the um uh the what is it, the Liberty Tree Tavern and all. They had that whole yeah. back area. Um uh. I, I don't know. I, I think it compared to all the other lands, I think it's the most comfortable land to, to walk through. It just, and... hmm. Maybe the times I go, I feel like I'm always in this crush of the people funneling from Fantasyland and, and Frontierland, kind of jamming up to head towards the hub. So I, I don't yeah. know. All right. Well, all right. That's not the focus. But whatever. I, I like that area anyway. So, all yeah, right. I do too. This has been a great show. Thank you for the education. I'm glad. I'm glad we've covered all our topics and everything else because we're ten minutes in and we yeah, <laughs> haven't yeah, even we gotten got to the first to one. But actually, it's been it's been pretty good. I didn't know that about yeah. the the Liberty. So so now Florida yeah. is the only state with two uh, Liberty Bells. Yeah, suck it, Pennsylvania. We got two. <laughs> like, why would they give it away? Like, they couldn't like send it over to Pittsburgh or something. Like, I, I mean, don't know. Would Pennsylvania you? is a big state, huh? Would you? I mean, when you want to, I would. Send it to uh, yeah, for, uh, absolutely. Would, because if I were Philadelphia, I go. You know what? Here you go. You have the second one, Pittsburgh. Oh well, please. I don't know. Anyway, all right. Let's roll the news. All right. What's news. up? What's happening in the world? Well, a lot's happened in the last couple of weeks. Um, okay. So the first thing is uh, Siemens, the company, is ending mm-hmm. their sponsorship with Disney Parks. Oh. So what does that mean? That means nothing. They means currently nothing. they sponsor Space Your Birth. Mm-hmm. They sponsor Illuminations, mm. and they sponsor It's a Small World at Disneyland. Now, yeah. I, I don't, you know, It's a Small World at Disneyland. I don't think that's going to affect that too much, right? They probably won't shut that ride down, though. No. Right. Um, however, Disney leadership has formally announced that they are focusing on Epcot next, 
And oh so this that... throws in, you know, with all of the other plans and rumors that we've heard. Mm-hmm. Um, now it kind of throws Spaceship Earth and Illumination. Although Illuminations, I'm I'm pretty sure it was going to be ending relatively soon anyway. Um, it's what, been the show, running for the show itself. The show itself, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this version <clears throat> has been running since 2000, so yeah. it's it's getting a little long in the tooth. I mean, I think it can definitely they can definitely do something new there. Yeah, and the last time I saw it, it, it wasn't even working well. The uh, the little thing that the, the globe that opens up with the video and stuff. Yeah, it. Uh, what was it? It looked like it stayed stuck open, and there was like oh. a video on it, and it was like you know clearly it was a bad show. But okay. so maybe they're just like, ah, eh, we're dumping it. Don't bother fixing it. Yeah, but <laughs> the you know the one thing that is that does you know uh, make me a little nervous is Spaceship Earth. Um, I'm oh, yeah, really of course, hoping... they're going to find it's going to get sponsored by like Monster Energy drinks, and they're going to turn it into a, a thrill ride. <laughs> Maybe so. You see, that's that's the kind of thing I really hope does not happen. Yeah. Um, happen. You know, so so we'll see um, uh, what happens with that. But uh, they they they've been the sponsor for 12 years mm-hmm. now, which I didn't realize they had been the sponsor that long, but awesome yeah really because yep. of their sponsorship uh they got the you know the wand taken down so oh, really was that because of them yeah it was because they so? redid spaceship earth and took that down at the same time yeah, so not, i mean it's, well no like it was Seaman part of said it. nope you got to take down that hideous thing yeah they they pretty much did really yeah i didn't know that yeah okay. well, it was, good uh, for it was them. like a package deal yeah exactly so if i if i had any idea what they made or did or services <laughs> they provide i would i would buy them well so one thing they used to sponsor is the mm-hmm. osborne uh crystal Aww. sites uh yeah. sylvania is one of their uh, oh, right, right, brands right. so okay um you know they make <laughs> yeah. a bunch Here's of stuff. There's a bunch of light bulbs no I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding i know what siemens is but i mean it's not like a yeah. it's not like a general consumer no, um, you have to what, know, right? Exactly. Yeah, they should see what Monsanto is doing. Maybe they're maybe they're available. They they have a lot of problems. They probably could use some good <laughs> press. They could use some good, some good from, PR. You know, from killing Monsanto. people with Roundup and everything right now. But uh, I don't know why that's always my uh, my go to when I think of sponsors because like the the House of the Future mm-hmm. wasn't that sponsored? Sure, by it is. I don't that, know why I was that. And, I mean, they sponsored a ton of stuff. Did they? Yeah, the. Okay. Um, uh, Adventure through inner space at Disneyland, oh, sponsored yeah. by them, right? Yeah. I mean, that was yeah. huge for them. Um, yeah. They they sponsored at uh, Disney World, I believe they sponsored America the Beautiful hmm. for a while. Um, yeah, they, I was they thinking sponsored of them as a bunch just of a Disney Disneyland sponsor. Right. No, they they mm-hmm. sponsor a couple of things, and I think I could be wrong about this, uh, but I think they own like Coppertone. Mm. Sunscreen and all, and so like they're they sponsor, they were the but official. Doesn't that seem weird that like like I don't know branding at that level when you're except for GE because it's a whole different thing, but when you're just like that giant conglomerate, mm-hmm. like I need to run out and get me some Monsanto because you know if it's copper tone, fine, then there's something yeah. there I can do. But anyway, all right. So are there any so, um, likely? candidates no this, this, or anything? no this this came out just last week or whatever and it's right. so early that um and, and with the other changes so mm-hmm. who knows like is another sponsor just going to come in and sponsor it and make a little bit of changes or are they gonna not have a sponsor and completely redo it and put make it you know mike from monsters inc and have a Monsters <laughs> Inc. ride in there, you know, like it could be anything. So yeah, that I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna be positive. They're, they're not gonna touch the ride itself. <laughs> yeah, it could um, they could make it in, really make it into the Death Star and have a uh, Star Wars ride there. Yeah, I don't think they will. I think they I think that has enough love. I don't, uh, I don't think I they will. So. Huh? Okay. Well, you know what? I'll do it. Okay. I'll sponsor it. Cool. Actually, do you do you have any like uh, any insight of like what what Siemens paid annually? Mm. Was it in any of these reports? Or? No, they usually don't. I don't think I've ever really seen what they yeah. what the like, dollar I don't even know the is. scale. Is it, yeah. is it like a is it like a ten bucks a day, a million bucks a day? I really yeah. don't even know. Probably I would I would venture today. to say that it's probably in the tens of millions. For tens of um, millions a year. Or no, I think I would say tens of millions over, you know, like over contract. 10 years or whatever, five yeah, years yeah. or something like that. Yeah, they they would probably pay, you know, whatever, 
uh, yeah, 50 million, maybe 10 million a year or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That seems plausible. Okay. And before that, it was what, like AT&T, right? It was AT&T. Well, originally uh, Bell Systems. Yeah. Good times. And then, then AT&T. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's it. But actually, I think about it, like studios, they have rides. They're not sponsored by people, are they? Uh, they well, yeah, they have uh, like um, it's like the great movie ride. Does it have sponsor? Yeah, oh sure, TCM. It does, really? Sure, TCM. Uh, yeah, that was a big. Uh, well, not a big change, but uh, it was a change oh, yeah, a few years ago, that. right? Yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. changed the movie at the end. Did it have somebody before that? Um, sure, Coca Cola was the original sponsor. Wow, it must not be worth the money because I, you know. I don't <laughs> That's funny. Um, why does why does Coke need to sponsor anything? They're, well, they're everywhere in that park. I, I mean, know, you I can't know. you can't turn around without seeing their logo. The um, uh, rock and roller coaster is sponsored by Hanes. The underwear people? Yeah. Why? Because because of, of like cool rock and roll like you know sure, t shirts that you roll your Marlboros up in. Like I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Muppet Vision used to be sponsored by um, by Kodak. Uh, you stepped on my my insider no, joke. I'm sorry. You stepped on my insider joke. I was going to say that that uh, that rock and roller coaster thing. That's shocking. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Man, it even took me a few seconds. Yeah, uh, right. Even Star Wait. Tours uh, was sponsored by like Energizer and M and M's for a while. M um, and M's really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. So so yeah, sponsorships okay. come and go. You know, yeah. I guess, you know, companies are like, hey, yeah, we'll sponsor it. And then they realize, oh, I'm not getting anything out of this. And yeah. stop, you know, the sponsorship. So. Hmm. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. Maybe, you're a, maybe your employer would like to do it. Yeah. That, you yeah. Bring well, that up the there, next, there is a printing meeting. press in there. And uh, we could uh, <laughs> have, have the dissent, you know, talking about the how one. awesome newspapers are <laughs> and how they're coming back. And yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and how you should subscribe to your local newspaper. You, you know, you say that. And I know you're uh, you're kind of joking. But last time we rode through that, or a recent time anyway, uh, yeah. my five-year-old said to me, what is that, yeah. Dad? And, and did you I explain? Said, well, huh? Did you explain? Yeah, I did. Of course. I said, you know, in ancient times, son, <laughs> before the internet, a time that you can't even fathom, you know, that's how we had to find out what the Kardashians were up to. Was, <laughs> that's uh, right. You know, some ink on paper. That's right. Yep, that's funny. And the funny thing is, that's actually a modern day press in there. It just uh, just looks. It like is. It, but that's how they okay. Happen. All right. Anyway. All right. So moving on. Uh, <laughs> all right. What else is news? All right. Our oh, next this news. Next, uh, this you better just settle for this next topic. Is um, uh, Disney last week on their blog yeah. announced that they are making changes to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride? Yes. Yes. Uh, first at Disneyland Paris, and then next year <sighs> as the rides in Disneyland and Disney World go down for rehab, they're going to change uh, the scenes to mirror what is being done at Disneyland Paris. Yep. So the biggest, the the main change is the auction scene, where mm-hmm. currently the um, head pirate is auctioning off uh, women from the village mm-hmm. to as other pirates. pirates. are want are want to do, yes. And so they are going to change that to make it where the redhead, um, instead of being a victim of this, she is now going to be a pirate, and they're mm-hmm. going to give her a gun. And oh, good. The, the rest, good. Uh, more guns, <laughs> and the rest <laughs> of more guns. The uh, witches, winches, as they're mm-hmm. called now, um, they will mm-hmm. now be uh, villagers who are uh, the the two pirates are now taking stuff from them and auctioning off the stuff instead of the actual people. Hmm. Man, Glenn. So our next I'm news so... item is... <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, I'm, I'm, no, you know, no. this Go is ahead. covered everywhere all over the it, Disney news it sites. Is. I mean, it it you know, has been. I just it, felt... All the already out there, but I just... I, can't, I But the problem is I have nothing to stand on. Like, if, if it's not clear from my tone, I generally think this is asinine uh, mm-hmm. because, you know, I, on the one hand, and you and I kind of texted about it one day. On the other hand, on one hand, if, you know, it, it has kind of struck me as that's a little odd that, you know, it's almost glorifying that. But, you know, and if you were creating the ride today, you absolutely wouldn't do that, right? If some right. if somebody came in with that as a suggestion, they probably wouldn't be in Imagineering too long after that, right? Right. Um, I know from experience. So the... <laughs> So I get it from that, 
But that thing has been in there for two generations. It's yeah. been there a long time. And I don't have the stats, but I'm pretty sure that it has not had any appreciable effect on, you know, the the selling of redheads in Caribbean towns. But um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, like, like I said, I'm less upset about this change than I, uh, that I, than I was with the changes in the scene right after that, where originally there were uh, male pirates mm -hmm. chasing female pirates. Um, and then, except for the very last um, uh, section of that, where uh, there was one, you know, like a homely looking uh, woman who was chasing around the pirate with a broom. So mm -hmm. it, it right. was a joke and it paid off, right? right that, right, right. you know, that she was a big, strong woman and she could fend off the, the pirate. And, and right. So anyway, and then they had the, um, you know, the pirate. In front, uh, the barrels, you know, he's talking about finding, you know, uh, chasing the women and getting the women. And now um, Jack Sparrow's in there. and all. So I, I don't like that part. I, I, I really hated those changes. This change, uh, you know, if, if you're going to make that change, then I don't know. This change, it, it doesn't, I'm not crying about it. But, but this is such an, it's such an iconic scene of this ride and it and it's you know and this is this is the problem with all disney stuff is that it, it you know it crosses over territory where it's no longer just an attraction it's a bit of a museum and a bit of yeah. a, a a bit of a um what's the word i'm looking for shrine sounds a little too uh uppity but you know what i mean it's a bit like i mean walt was part of the creation of this and stuff so yeah you know i understand the sensibilities and i'm obviously not equipped to you know i'm not, I'm not a woman i can't uh, really judge like you know, does it have a real effect? Like when they changed the pirates chasing uh, the women to the women chasing the pirates, I, I think at the time it was noted because uh, some women had complained about some sort of essentially PTSD effects based on, mm. you know, uh, uh, rapes or attempted rapes or whatever. And, you know, I'm a guy. It's hard for me to know how legitimate that is. But, yeah. you know, I just I, I don't know. It just strikes me as some people are just trying too hard to to quote, fix things that just really don't make a difference. And, and, yeah. and the irony to me is that they, that part of the fix is they're putting more guns in the scene, right? So let's fix this by having more weapons that kill people. <laughs> so it just, right. you know, it all depends on what one's particular hot buttons are, I guess. But I, you know, and the bottom line is these guys are pirates. This is what, you know, yeah. they're supposed to be bad guys. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody's supposed to like the pirates. Right. Right. <sighs> anyway. All right, but it's going to happen. So yeah, yeah, it's going to happen. So just relax. Whatever. Accept it. All right. So uh, so I should really go out there and just buy up all the we wants the redhead uh, merchandise, <laughs> right? And that's the other yeah. thing is like is like uh, okay, and, and this is why it's so weird is like okay, well we need to change this part of the attraction because it's not you know uh, sensitive enough to to you know to humans and etc. Yet they've had whole lines of merchandise. Yeah. That glorified that particular part of the ride because, yeah. you know, it, it was a popular, you know. And, and only fairly recently, honestly. I mean, they, they, yeah. Disney came out not that long ago with the redhead merchandise. Um, yeah. Before that, it was, it, that you didn't see the redhead, you know, like you couldn't, you know, it, they didn't publicize it that much. Yeah. It, it has been only recently that they started publicizing it. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to sound like I'm completely like sort of retro justifying my position, but mm -hmm. I, I have always seen that scene as, how do I put this, that uh, the redhead looked like a victim. She seemed like a really strong character mm -hmm. that she wasn't worried about what was happening. Right. And I'm to completely overanalyzing this now, but but without right. she was consciously <laughs> thinking about it, that's the feeling I got left away with that she's like, okay, you know, we'll go through this. And, and yeah. in the end... And I joked to you that you know, what Disney should have done is like made it made a short movie out of it. What happens after that, where she basically you know uh, breaks her bonds and kicks everybody's ass and you know frees all the other women. But you know, it's, yeah, it, but that's kind of the how I felt about that character is because she clearly was not worried about what you know. She didn't look terrified. She didn't look. No, and, you know, she's so, kind of showing her wares, right? Doesn't she like hike up her dress yeah, a little bit? And yeah, stuff? exactly. Right. So I don't know. And it just I seems think. Like a, you know, you mentioned the mini movie or whatever, but I think there's a reference in the first um, Pirates of the Caribbean movie. You know what? They're Maybe in the bar. Right. <clears throat> and that's I think, where I stole it from. Yeah, yeah, and I think they have a redhead <laughs> that comes up to Jack Sparrow, and yeah. she slaps him like two times. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it was like, 
Okay, there you go. You know. All right. So, I don't know. Yeah. It didn't I need know. to be messed with, but anyway. And so, and if it were just any ride, you know, that let's say the ride was built 15 years ago, I wouldn't care so much. But, you know, it's, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mark Davis? Um, yeah. Do I have my names right? Yeah. And, and, and Walt? I mean, th- this was, sure. you know, foundational Disneyland. Th- I mean, that ride especially kind of cemented the, you know, people's notion of what, what the Disney parks were about, right? Yeah. Sure. Anyway. All right. Okay. What other news do you have? You got so, anything else that's not going to get me all worked up? <laughs> Sunday, this past Sunday, yeah. uh, on July 2nd, uh, yeah. Disney Quest officially closed their doors Aww. for the final time. Aww. So I'd like a, yeah. just a moment of silence okay. for Disney Quest. All right. All right. Let's do it. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's probably <laughs> twice as long as it needed to be. But, <laughs> right. Okay. Um, uh, you know, you I, know, I could you know, go on. The about irony Disney is Quest. that. The, the irony there is that all the people that use the podcast players that cut out all the empty space, the, there's not going to be a moment of silence, but that's okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I, I've been to that place exactly one time. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, so what I'll do is in a future version of the Remember the Magic Corner, I'll I'll do a Disney Quest <laughs> version of it. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I, I don't want to go into it right now because I would just drone on. So we'll do a little history and um, I'll give my personal opinions of it then. But, um, okay. I, you know, I, I, well, for it to close for the NBA experience, I think it's ridiculous, but yeah, that's, you yeah, know, well. whatever. Okay. So anyway, yeah. so moving on. No, no. Um, hey, wait a minute. You left off the most important aspect oh of God. this closure. Oh, you Lord. know what? Uh, what? What? That's our place. You really get it. It is our place. That's right. <laughs> it is. That's our place. That is true. That's for the the first time that you know that we ever hung out somewhere outside of work because I right. met you at work, right? And right. Our, our wives came and we yes. and we hung out at Disney Quest. Right? That's right. So I have that pictures was, of it. That was the last time I went. So that yeah, was the last been. time. That's the only time you've been there. It was Glenn. It was so special. I never wanted to dilute that <laughs> with, with other memories of Disney Quest. I just wanted it to be our thing. That's great. So yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of sad, but kind of not. I, actually, I'm I'm less sad that it's closing. I'm more sad that it's going to be an NBA store. That that's exactly the, exactly that's, uh, whatever NBA. Okay, all right. Um, next is a rumor. Yeah. Oh, so last week, uh, Disney filed a, par- a permit for mm-hmm. Epcot's backstage area right behind France. Okay. So the rumor is that uh, they are going to put the Ratatouille ride that is in France. Uh, Put it in um, the a- actual France and the Walt Disney Studios in Disneyland Paris. So confused. Well, I know. I know. I, I'm sorry. As I'm saying that, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna extend France to take the ride that's in France to put it in France. Thank you. So <laughs> wait, there's the a, I didn't know that there's a Ratatouille ride in in uh, in Paris. Yes, there is. In, in Euro Disney, I didn't know that. In Euro, okay. yeah, Euro Disney. Do you like um, that movie? I love that movie. I think it's a great yeah, okay. movie. I didn't think you would say that. I, I like when I first watched it. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I gave it a B. It was okay. Uh-huh. And um, you know, but I get kids now, and yeah. I don't know if you know this, but kids like to watch <laughs> the same movie over and over and over and over, even if there's I, a thousand other movies in the library. I am aware so of I, that. So I've seen that movie so many times now. I have like a fondness for it. I really, I like it. Yeah. So okay, is the ride good? Is it like a like? It, it's good. It? It's not great, but it's good okay. from what I understand. It's a trackless ride. So your vehicle like isn't you don't see a track or anything, but it's uh, hmm. controlled. Hmm. So anyway, yeah, I, from what I hear, it's a it's a good ride. Uh, it's re- you know since it's already developed and designed and everything, it's fairly cheap to. They just need to build it sure. right, you know. Right. So it, it's an easy, uh, and you know, and it goes along with all of the other Epcot things that are, um, uh, you know, starting out. Um, I hmm. assume we will hear something in the next couple of weeks at D twenty three Expo. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll find out, but, but the, so the biggest question is looking at the plans, it looks like they're still keeping the theater for impressions of France, but isn't it diff impressions? Well, different? I know, but I can't do a French accent. <laughs> so, <laughs> as I was saying it, I'm like, he's going to call me out for not <laughs> saying the real Cause thing. you're Mr. Pedantic about everything. Oh, oh no, 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 that's not exactly the wording. So, I'm gonna, yeah, so I'm gonna that'll be the biggest thing is uh, will mm. will I keep the movie or not? Um, yeah. uh, I l- I like the movie. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy going and uh, I think it's a beautiful movie. Um, mm-hmm. 
it's nice to sit down under the air condition for a little bit. Yeah, amen, brother. Mm-hmm. And watch a beautiful movie with beautiful music. So I don't <laughs> I never know I'm I'm asleep at that point. <laughs> I don't but, think yeah. there's any reason to really take that out. But yeah. that's just me. Yeah, cool. Okay, yeah. now I gotta look into this uh, ratatouille thing. So uh Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the last bit of Disney news that I have is the 2018 Disney dining plan uh, is mm-hmm. now going to inclu- in- include alcoholic uh, beverages. Wow. So that's good. That works out well for you. It works out great for me. Yeah. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, huh. I think it's just a way for Disney to make a heck of a lot of money. Weird. Um, okay. Because there are going to be, uh, there's going to be a hefty percentage of people who do not drink. You have to order your drink at your meal. It's not like you have a separate beverage, uh, like a credit or anything. Okay. So you get two alcoholic drinks a day. Uh, okay. One, uh, you know, so one for lunch, one for dinner. But <laughs> you know, who's going to, you know, there's going to be a certain percentage that do not uh, partake in this for maybe one meal or whatever. And so, so, so so can you help me out here? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pause for a second. So uh, give me the foundation of the meal plan. Cause I've never used it. So I don't really know other than like, I hung out with you and you're like, and you're like, dude, get, get all the Mickey bars you want. Cause we got this meal plan. So I'm like, (laughs) okay. Um, Yeah. So how does it work? Okay. So the dining plan, the dining plan is only available for, uh, people who buy packages through Disney. Okay. And you, all it is is a prepayment of meals. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not you're not getting anything. You're you're essentially just pay, prepaying for your meals, so you don't have to worry about um, you know the cost while you're there. You you just uh, you know swipe your magic band, and it's all credit based, right? But so what, but, you have right. But what's the structure? Do you get do you, so there's like, there's a couple. Is there's it a dollar a, amount, or is it a like you get one uh, Mickey yeah. bar a day, or mm-hmm. how's that work? So quick service. Uh, Per day is fifty-two dollars. Okay. Okay. You get two quick service meals, two yeah. snacks, uh, and you get one refillable mug that uh, you know from your your hotel. Okay. Okay. So two meals a day and two snacks a day for mm-hmm. fifty-two fifty per person. Okay. That's what it is today. The, the, the best, That's what it is uh, in, 2018. Um, in 2018. The the okay. prices went up about nine percent over 2017 because of the alcoholic beverage edition. Mm. Well, you presume that's why, but okay. Because it could be the other yeah. way around. It could be that they they just needed to justify the pricing, or not that it went up because of it, but you know would have gone. It would have gone up anyway. What Tra- am I trying to say? Traditionally, it's, it's, like, it's like annual passes went up, but they threw in the benefit of like photo pass and stuff. So it's like yeah, but it, traditionally like the, there's not a price increase um, in mid year. It usually happens in January, July 2016. You can start buying your plan for a trip taken in 2017. Okay. If you bought it from July to December, you paid X amount. Uh, In January, they came out with an increase to the 2017 dining plan, which Mm -hmm. is about which was about four percent increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you bought your 2017 dining plan from January. To December, you paid four percent more than somebody who bought it from July to December mm-hmm. of 2016. Okay. Okay. Right. So, July 2017, uh, the 2018 plans went on sale. They added the alcohol, and they added the the prices went up nine percent. But so but they not, anticipate but... in January they'll still go up another four percent. Okay, but it's not just alcohol; it's it's specialty drinks as well. So it doesn't have to just yeah, clarify. That's it doesn't have to be alcoholic, right? That's true. So and, and um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but but I, you don't drink, right? Or rarely, yeah, that's correct. If ever. I but but I mean, a lot of people. But do. I don't maybe, care. Maybe if, if people. Yeah, do I drink. know, but no, no, no. I understand, but but maybe because of that, you're under uh, appreciating the value. Of this, like if if you did, oh, yeah. like if you were if you were you know. Uh, a dude or dudette that, you know, had like their Michelob with their lunch or whatever people right. drink these days, then, you know, maybe you'd be like, oh, this is great. I've been, you it, know. I've, yeah, it definitely does. Know. It definitely does work in the favor of people who do who do drink because it is, you are getting a bargain. That is, right. that is true. Right. Based so on I the mean, prices of the drinks. Yeah. But yeah. in the grand scheme of things, they're going to be, because um, also uh, people from 9 to 
20 years old, they mm-hmm. have to buy the adult plan, but they cannot <laughs> so drink they, alcohol. So the 10-year-olds get the liquor? That's well, awesome. exactly. So they have to have the specialty <laughs> oh, drink. So see, see, where normally they probably wouldn't get a milkshake yeah. at lunch and a milkshake at dinner and a milkshake right. the next day and a milkshake the next at night, wow. you know. That's there, worse than the alcohol. That's a lot is the, of exactly the sugar. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, wow. so this is it's you know I I'm obviously not a, fun, a fan of it. What I think mm-hmm. they should have done was made it an add on. If you want yeah, to, of course, drink, of course. then you can yeah. add this on. But it's kind of, they, like, cru- it's kind of like cruise ships do, right? So you, yeah. you got different drink patch packages like you right. go on the cruise, and if you want the yeah yeah, it makes sense. Huh. So anyway, so I'm not a fan of it, but mm-hmm. uh, you know I, I'm I know it's going to work for a lot of people. Yeah. It's just that I yeah. think they should have made an option instead of a. Yeah, because basically for you, it's gonna it goes up in price with no real value, right? Right. I mean, look, yeah. I would, I, you know, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't have a milkshake or something every now and then, yeah, but, but I wouldn't have enough milkshakes to right. really reap the value. And, and you'd have to pay I, I would walk out at for, 500 pounds, you know. Yeah. And it's not just you, it's it's all it's your family. So all, is, uh, yeah, is exactly. your entire family going to have a milkshake right. at, at lunch and dinner every day? Probably, right. probably not. Let's yeah. hope not. Hmm, okay. Well, you know. So stuff's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So that's it. That wraps up news. <laughs> Moving on. I think mm-hmm. that you took a trip to the Magic Kingdom. A couple yeah, yeah. Of, to, to call it a trip makes it sound too too lofty, too big. But yeah, yeah, we went. We went. And uh, you know, um like you always do, you said something before I went on this trip that it just got stuck in my head. So, you know, I had to kind of consciously think about things. I don't know what it was, but you said, you know, how come, how come every time you go to the parks, it's a, it's not a great experience or something something along yeah. those lines? Or why do you get so stressed out at the parks? Something yeah. like that. So he said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to be more like Glenn and I'm going to relax this time around. Awesome. And yeah, so, which um, I don't know how you became that poster child, but um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we went out there. It was, uh, it was no occasion or anything. I think it was just. Good weather, whatever, right? Yeah. I don't think there's any reason we went. No, you know, I just I pay 160 bucks a month for these uh, these annual passes. I probably <laughs> use, use them, them once in a while. <laughs> so yeah, so we went out there, and um, you know, it's a I don't know about you, but uh, when you lived here, whether you had patterns as you go through the park, but I, I realized, you know, as we're going through the gates, I realized, you know, what we always turn right and go to Tomorrowland and mm-hmm. then Fantasyland, and by that point, it's dinner, and then like so, we never get to Frontierland or Adventureland. So I realized my son has never seen really anything in Adventureland. Mm-hmm. So I mean, except for maybe Road Pirates one or two times, mm-hmm. uh, you know, reference the redhead scene from before. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this time we, I made a conscious effort to go to. Um, oh, and we just read a book he and I, uh, my son, about, and it took place in uh, I think Baghdad, and so there were magic carpets and you yeah. know that kind of thing. Cool. So I'm like, let's go, let's go ride on the uh, the uh, the Aladdin thing, which uh, I don't think I'd ever been on before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I went that way. Went up in the treehouse, which I hadn't been in forever. Nice. Um, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm honestly kind of surprised that's still around because I don't think most people know the, <laughs> the story anymore. And that's got to yeah. be a maintenance nightmare, that thing. But Yeah. They like changed, that, in Disneyland, they changed it to tar, Tarzan. Tarzan. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. And actually, that's what that's what my son thought it was because uh, that's uh, he hasn't seen Swiss Family Robinson. Uh, yeah. So he, that's, it, that's what it looked like. Well, actually, it's my fault because I told him. I said, remember in Tarzan, they built like, uh, you know, oh, the, yeah, yeah. the stuff out of, in the trees or whatever. And then he was like, oh, okay, I get it. Um, yeah, so it was good. We had a good time. It was only one hitch, which was, you know, it's and it's my fault. It's always my fault. I understand that. But it's, uh, you know, it was a meal time, and mm-hmm. family meal time can get kind of stressful because, uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, but kids get kind of cranky when they're ready to eat, but they don't know they're hungry, right? And mm-hmm. they don't want to stop doing, but they're, they're cranky. And in fact, so do I. So, you yeah. know, we finished like, <laughs> we finished Me like the teacups, <laughs> and I'm hungry all the time. So, you know, add that <laughs> right. up. So, um, uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so we rode the teacups and it was like, oh shoot, it's now one o'clock. Um, it, it was hot though. It was blazing hot. And so that's, that's a great combination, right? It's blazing hot, uh, cranky kids and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're like, where are we going to eat? So, uh, there's this tiny little place there called Cosmic Rays. Don't know if you've seen it before. Uh, yeah, it's a little eatery that's there. Yeah. It's a little, it's uh, a, boutique. It's a, cozy, uh, it's a cozy little thing. Right. Yeah. Side note, have I ever mentioned on the show my my like my biggest memory of that place that I just will never shake and I don't know why? I, I can't. Did I ever tell you? I don't, did, I don't think like so. Like what I think of every time I see that place or go into it. All right, a little, little sidebar. Let me, we need like um, harp music or something, like a flashback <laughs> kind of thing. But um, 
So the, the, this is a dumb story. I'm going to share it anyway. So the first time I went to, um, cause actually I'm kind of curious if anybody knows who these performers were. So the first time I went there to that, uh, that Disney world place was in 83 ish or so. Mm-hmm. And there was a, a tiny little band at the time called the police. Um, you may remember them. Yeah. And, and the very first time I ever heard, uh, the song, every breath you take, that's, I'm sorry. That's the one I was trying to get to the very first time I heard that song was there and it was it was performed by it was before um sunny eclipse was there and mm-hmm. it was an actual performer yeah actually it was, it was it was two guys it was almost like a smothers brothers kind of act or something like that mm-hmm. um do you remember that kind of thing do you remember like live I, performances? yeah no there? i do remember live acts there yes yeah okay I, anyway, I don't know what, what year they stopped, but anyway, that's what I think of every time of day. because then, then after that, you know, it was like right when that song came out and then after that, then I started listening to it and said, so, and then, you know, it's just been in, in my uh, memory ever since, but anyway, weird little flashback. Okay. Let's harp music back in. So, um, yeah, so we we're hungry. So we're like, well, let's just step in there. Glenn, that place is a, I don't, I don't know what word I can use for a family friendly show like this, but. My God. And I don't know if it was just the time I went, but it was, um, it was insane. It was yeah. absolutely insane. And so we're going in and I'm, I, I gave myself that V8 head smack and I'm like, oh, I could have used the, uh, the ordering oh, yeah. thing in the app. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I could have done it before Glenn did. And, um, I totally forgot, totally spaced out on it. Uh, as we're walking through the door, I'm like, well, but we're here now. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, it was mayhem even just trying to find a table and there were like, you know, people saving seats. It was like high school again. They're like, oh, that's saved. We're saving that table. <laughs> like there's one person at a seat of 15 people. And, uh, anyway, I hate that. Scenario. Two things I can't stand is like not being able to find a parking place somewhere. And like that kind of thing where you're just fighting to get, you know, a place on the beach with all the other animals. And, yeah. uh, it's crazy. Uh, so I, I figured I'd wait in line. Glenn, that line, every single line was like, I don't know how many deep. I was in that line for like 25 minutes to, mm-hmm. to, you know, order my quote fast food. I should have just done the app, sat down. And then when my food was ready, go, gone and get it in, in hindsight. So a little pro tip for anybody that might be faced with that. Yeah. And of course, after I got my food, I sat down literally five minutes after that. Mm-hmm. No lines, no lines at all. <laughs> so I, don't know, I don't know what happened. Like it was just this peak wave. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that was the only hitch is that kind of went, but we had a good time. We went on, um, so what do we do differently? I tried to do a bunch of stuff I don't normally do. We went on the uh, Winnie the Pooh ride because the, the little baby likes that. Cool. And uh, yeah. Do you like that ride? I don't know if you do. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. My my problem with that ride is it's just like, I, I guess, you know, I'm admittedly I'm slow, but you know, the ride is just like, wait, what, uh, wait, that scene went by, wait, what was in that? Wait, it's just like, it, it all comes <laughs> yeah. at you so fast. And it's like, because it was built on the existing, uh, you right. know, Mr. Toad's track. Right. So uh, uh, that's how I always feel. Is it? Yeah. Not really, but they no? changed the track. Well, then there's no excuse for it being as bad as it is. <laughs> there's just like too much. Cram it is in quick. Time. It's very quick. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so we did that, did a bunch of new stuff, and I even did, um, you'll you'll be proud of me, I did the uh, the tiki, 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 tiki room. Did you? Which I remembered hating before. Right. Um, and it wasn't until after it, and but this time around, I'm like, I liked it. My son loved it, and, you know, we, we've we listened to the tiki, 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 tiki room song, mm-hmm. um, like, probably a hundred times on the Alexa, because um, mm-hmm. it's fun to ask her, and she's just answering now. So I know that's, uh, I don't know if favorite's the right word, but I know you have an affection for that. I hated it before, but I didn't realize until <laughs> until after I got back that the version I saw the first time that I hated it was not the version that I saw this past month, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where I, I'm, you're our resident historian. I'm like, well, you know, it made me curious because, again, this is like we were talking about the pirates, or I was. Um, you know, Walt had a very direct hand in this attraction, right? Yeah. More so oh, yeah. probably than, than maybe, you know, most, uh, just about any others, um, with some exceptions, right? So, yeah. so I was curious to know a little bit more. So I said, Glenn, why don't you, uh, <laughs> why don't you whip up some info for me? So I don't have to do so much typing. Yeah, so tell me more. Tell me about these singing birds and whatnot. All right. So the the Tiki Room, it goes way back um, as early as the 50s uh, with the development of Disneyland. 
So Walt was obsessed with realistic animation. Like, he, obviously, in uh, his movies and everything else, it, it's been traditional animation. But he was really focused on bringing that to life, right, um, in mm-hmm. any way he could. And so the so he was he was really he was obsessed with that. But when Disneyland opened, the only animatronics they had were really used in dark rides where you couldn't really make out the figures because mm-hmm. just like in Winnie the Pooh, you were going by really quick. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were just animated with cables and other mechanics. Um, but by the 19, 1960s, advancements in hydraulic and pneumatic hardware uh, allowed more fluid and lifelike mu- movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, the advancements in computer systems finally allowed Walt the ability to proceed with his dream of animating a human for Disneyland. Mm-hmm. So in 1956, the he he wanted to put in the Hall of Presidents uh, for a Liberty Street um, section off of Main Street. Um, and he started development uh, with his Imagineers. So they try, they, they started by trying to, to create a lifelike figure of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, so right soon after the development started, um, Walt uh, took a trip to the wonderful city of New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> so while shopping yeah. on, well, on Royal Street in the French Quarter, Walt mm-hmm. and his wife Lillian um, found a small brass bird cage with a mechanical bird. <laughs> uh, the animation of the little bird impressed him, and he figured if toy makers can do that, you know, that animation that well, uh, he thought that the technology that they were developing at Disneyland could could make the birds absolutely you know, perfect. You know, that's, it's such a nice way to say what you just said when in reality it was probably, he went back to California threw that thing down on a conference room table somewhere and said, look at this. What is wrong with you people that you can't do this? (laughs) I I imagine it being very similar to that. (laughs) Yeah. So anyway, but okay. So he took it back and he said, Hey guys, Hey, Hey, did you get, look what I got (laughs) show and tell. Right. <laughs> All right. So when he got back, he put the Lincoln program on, on temporary hold and focused um, his resources into developing um, many types of birds. He mm. originally wanted to have a, a Tiki Hut restaurant where the birds would come to life at the end of the meal and perform in a concert. Um, but the restaurant concept, it outgrew the space that he had available in Disneyland. So um, the restaurant was shelved for a Tiki Bird attraction. Um, the, the Imagineers programmed the birds to sing in time with the songs and recorded it on computer tape so they could be played back perfectly each time. Yeah, computer tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, because the Tiki, because the Tiki room was the first to use computers, it was the first attraction to be air conditioned at Disneyland. Because, oh really? Because of yeah. the computers? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's uh-huh. cool. All right. See, now I'm starting to appreciate it. All right. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so the Enchanted Tiki Room opened on June 23rd, 1963 to uh-huh. great reviews and large audiences. Um, since the Tiki Room was financed by Walt personally and created by his Wed Enterprises that he owned, uh, uh-huh. the Tiki Room didn't use the A through E tickets. Uh-huh. Um it had a separate seventy-five cent charge for the first couple of years. Why? Wait, uh, why? Why would that have been the like? Why? There were <laughs> there were so many different. I mean, his, because his, Disney, his, Disneyland was his, so why? Uh, why did well, he have to go put wasn't. his own money? It was part well, of I mean, Walt Disney Productions. All right, but he was the head of Walt Disney Productions, <laughs> I so he could have just said, there were "He could have just said, go make." Ah, screw them. He could have just said, <laughs> "Go make, go make this tiki bird thing that I want." Like I, I know, I know. But I, I did Eisner ever put in this? Like, hey, oh, the Eisner paid for this attraction himself, and you got to pay another buck to go see, you know, whatever thing he threw together. I that's know. so it, weird. Isn't it, that strange? It, it is strange. It is strange. That's yeah. why I'm saying okay. it. That's because okay. it is. It's an oddity that uh, right. that this happened. Okay. Uh, but when it so when it was finally absorbed by Disneyland, I, and I don't have <laughs> mm-hmm. the facts on that. I couldn't today. I couldn't find the facts on how what happened. Like if Disneyland bought the you know the show or whatever. But anyway, Wait, whenever today? it was absorbed you, you by Disneyland, on, you only worked um, on this today. Hmm. You only worked on this today. You've had three weeks to pull this together. I know. Uh, okay. It was uh, it was an e-ticket. <laughs> okay. Really? The tiki yes. birds? Yes. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> they got what I asked for a refund. But all right. <laughs> From 1964 through 1973, it was mm-hmm. uh, the attraction was sponsored by United Airlines. Okay. And then in 1976, Dole picked up the sponsorship and it continues to sponsor to this day. Yeah, which we kind of stepped over something. Part of, I, I would imagine, the appeal of this attraction was in the 70s, like Polynesian was in. Like, yeah. That was like, and, and I'm sure United Airlines sponsorship was because, uh, and it probably had to do with the planes that were then available that could do affordable flights to uh, probably Hawaii, mostly. Yeah. Um, so that's probably why it became, uh, why it was probably a pretty big hit back then. Well, and that's very astute of you. That's exactly Thank why you, he was thinking of, of making it a restaurant because Tiki uh, restaurants and bars were were really in fashion at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like all that kitschy stuff. Yeah, like the Brady Bunch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. okay, so the original Tiki Room show was 17 minutes long and showcased 225 birds, drumming tiki figures, chanting tiki masks, and singing flowers. Wow. Uh, the hosts of the show are four macaws. Yeah. Named Fritz, Jose, Michael, and Pierre. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The Which, TV by the room. way, uh, let, hang on. Let, let's go back to the whole politically correct thing for a while. Okay. Does it strike you at all odd that their accents are a little mm, no, stereotypical? I, no, like, not does at that, all. Does that bother anybody? Just that, me. See, I'm, so bothered by thing, I'm bothered by things that make you're no so difference silly. at all. No, that's where they're from. <laughs> what? Yeah, Fritz. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fritz the Kraut, they called him, I think. You know, yeah. he's not saying Heil Hitler anymore. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> like. That part out. We <laughs> uh, 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 took a bad turn here. We all right. did. We did. You can't edit that out, though. You don't need that. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Back so, up, the back Tiki Room you. song that, that yeah. uh, your son loves so much and that's, uh, <laughs> that's married to this attraction, it yes. was written by the Sherman Brothers. Ole, ole, it's show time. In the tiki 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 room, in the tiki 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 room, all the birds sing words and the flowers croon. In the tiki 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 room. Oh, okay. And who they, wrote? They know a thing or two. Uh, yeah, quite a few things. They've they've written a ton of songs for Disney's movies and theme parks. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so getting to Disney World. Uh, so when Disney World opened in 1971, a duplicate of the attraction was built. However, mm-hmm. the show was called the Tropical Serenade. Oh, and it, right, right. It was right, located okay. in the Sunshine Pavilion along with the Sunshine Tree Terrace. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, which was, uh, so the Sunshine Pavilion was sponsored by the Florida Citrus Growers from 1971 through 1986. Mm-hmm. And just like as in Disneyland, when the attraction opened, it was an e-ticket attraction. Wow. Crazy. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So in Disneyland, the attraction has been modified only slightly since 1963. Um, and it's mainly by tightening the show from 17 minutes to 14 <laughs> to minutes. 16 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and then to about uh, 12 and a half minutes uh, okay. is the runtime today. And what kind of stuff are they tossing out? Is it just like, so like it, ah, this this joke doesn't really work? So yeah, some out. of the banter between the, the host, uh, as well okay. as, uh, so during the... Um, uh, let's all sing like the birdie sing. There's mm-hmm. a whistling portion of mm-hmm. it. They they yeah, took yeah. that out. Okay. Um, so they yeah they've just taken out little bits and pieces that you you probably wouldn't even notice anyway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Okay. Uh. In Disney World though, uh-huh. the show was drastically changed in 1998 with yes. the opening of. The Enchanted Tiki Room under new management, under which new management, added right. um, Iago from Aladdin and Zazu right. from The Lion King. That's the one I know. That yeah. I oh, it know. and that was awful. I saw it maybe. I know I saw it once, maybe a second time, but mm-hmm. it was unwatchable. Like I, I wouldn't even waste my time while. Now, it was, now how did? Yeah, I'm sorry. So how did it compare yeah. to? Like, was it a completely different script? Like, all yeah. I remember is that the, so, you know, before you go into the attraction, the main part, and, and I hope mm-hmm. I'm not stepping on any of your, your quote research here, but the, um, it, you know, before you go in, there's, there's like that pre-show thing. Yeah. That my kid thought that was the show, but I, I remember, oh. <laughs> I remember that yeah, was they, Iago and whatever the other thing was that you said. Um, no, it wasn't. So they were two agents, right? 
like um, oh, okay. Hollywood agents, uh, and I forget like Phil Hartman did the voice of one of them, and oh, Phil Hartman. Um, I forget who did the other Don. Was it Don Rickles? I don't. I don't know. Anyway, um, and so they were like Hollywood agents, and they oh, were okay. talking about the 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 bird, you know, like sponsoring, uh, representing the birds and in, okay. in different things, and um, and so it kind of gave you a preview of what was going to happen inside the attraction. Okay. Um, and so then anyway. the show inside was it like what were the changes that came about in, in ninety eight? So, how, how similar? Okay, was it? so they started with the show, right? Just like they all, it traditionally had, and as soon uh, as they started the song, um, the song, you know, in the tiki 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 tiki, tiki room. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> all of a sudden, um, Iago comes out and he's like, "Wait, and wait, he's, stop!" The and music. he's not. He's hang on. He's not annoying at all. I, no, just Gilbert Gottfried is not annoying to <laughs> any human right. on he's earth. He's got such a sonorous voice. He's so so <laughs> exactly. relaxing. Exactly. <laughs> so soothing. So. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, so then he he was like, oh, this is a hor, you know, the old show is a horrible show. We're gonna change mm. it up, and and then uh, Zazu was supposed to be the voice of reason, mm. uh, but they uh, somehow Iago angered the the gods, and so one of the gods would uh, a female god, I don't know which one it was, would rise up from the middle. She would come in. She sang a song. Um, and then went back down and like, you know, put Iago in his plate. Like he, she like hit him with lightning or something. And he, another animatronic came out and he was kind of burnt up. Mm-hmm. Right. So that, okay. that was kind of the show. So they completely changed it. Like the, most oh, yeah. of the music they took out and stuff other than yes, the, they the, did. the primary song. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Oh, and the primary song was even, uh, you know, it was, it was cut changed. up and, yeah. and mutilated. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, that's the version I saw. I hated it. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that different from the original. But, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, uh, but in January 2011, uh, a fire broke out in the attic of the attraction. And the, you know, uh, you can't say God didn't do this because it's too perfect. <laughs> the uh, Because the uh, Iago audio animatronic figure was burnt. In the, <laughs> in what the are you talking about? What and so they I were, mean? so they couldn't use them anymore. Like they were going right, to have to rebuild right. them. And so they figured, okay, well, enough people hate the show. Right. And, you know, we, we've been doing a lot of things to go retro and everything else. So they said uh, at that time, they just said, okay, we're going to put in the, the original show. Okay. And so August of that year, um, it reopened as Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room uh, with the Disneyland version of the show. And um, the next year, the Orange Bird uh, made a return to the Sunshine Tree Terrace, which I'm going to get to the Orange Bird in just a second. But uh, oh, okay. But that's that's pretty much the the history of uh, how it came about, and you know, covering everything uh, through right. Disney World's incarnation of it. Huh. So it's going to sound like I'm being sarcastic, and yeah. uh, but it's kind of a titan of a ride. Then I mean, it's got it's got some strong roots, and oh yeah, you know. no, absolutely. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and this it, yeah, it okay. really did usher in, and, and I, so I, I'm going to cover that in a second. But oh. um, I'll cover it now. But because of the the great reception of the this attraction way back when, uh, mm-hmm. this is what caused Walt to forge ahead with the Abraham Lincoln figure. Um, and which would go on to be the great moments with Mr. Lincoln attraction at the, right. at the 64, 65 world's fair. Right. And then the hall of presidents, you know, it wouldn't make, it never made it to Disneyland, but it did find a home at Disney world when it opened right. in 71. So it, it was the, really the origin of audio animatronics as we know it now. Hmm. Well, I have a much, uh, I have a very renewed perspective on it. So yeah. it, it also helps that, you know. My kid loved it. So he's just yeah. sitting there and like, you know, eyes wide open and just like, he loved it. That was yeah. great. So, so a couple, a couple other things real quick. Mm. So the bird, take your time. You the bird cage <laughs> that, what? uh, the bird cage that yeah, Walt okay. found in New Orleans. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it, he kept it in his formal office. Yeah. Uh, and it stayed there even after his death. All right. And when his working office was relocated to Disney world in 2001 for one man's dream, yeah, uh, they moved the birdcage to his working o- office um, in Florida. Hmm. Okay, didn't know that. Yeah. Um, in Disneyland, you can order a Dole Whip or any other Dole snacks that they have, and you can bring them into the attraction to eat. Wow. Yeah, we it, did that. 
last year. They're so liberal on the West Coast. Like, let anything, like <laughs> whatever, are. you know? Land, land of fruits what, and nuts, right? Whatever, man. Bring yeah. in your drinks. Which, by the way, you know, I, I lied. I, I said that the uh, the Cosmic Rays thing was my only stress point of, the, of my trip uh-huh. this time. No, I, I, I was wrong. Remember I said it was hot? Yeah. I really, I'm like, oh, you know what? We never go to Adventureland. I want a Dole Whip, right? Oh, nice. So where do they sell the Dole Whips? Well, so now at the Sunshine Tree Terrace, which is Yeah, well, guess now. who didn't know that? So <laughs> I'm all the way down there. It's super hot. I'm like, I, I don't know what that little seating area is right before the bridge to, you know, out of Adventureland. Uh-huh. I said, uh-huh. family, you sit there. We're going to have us some Dole Whips. Yeah. And I like went and looked at the little menu there. And so there, there's, there's still a little food dispensing place there. Yeah, well, but that's I, where I you get see that, the citrus swirl uh, there. Yeah, but I didn't want that. I wanted. I know. Wanted the other well, thing. you got to go in the back by the. Uh, yeah, that's what he told me. And I'm like, well, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go all the way over there. So they. So the reason they moved it, it they swapped them, right? So the Sunshine yeah. Tree Terrace used to be by the Tiki Birds. Well, just to mess with me. And that yeah. was the that so and that's uh, where I'm going next is, um, so. So Disney created a special character for the Florida citrus growers called the Orange Bird. I know you love this guy. This is like one of your favorites. <laughs> and the Sherman Brothers wrote the Orange Bird song, um, mm-hmm. and it was sung by Anita Bryant. Little Orange Bird, little Orange Bird, in the sunshine tree, in the sunshine tree, won't you think something sunny just for me? So anyway, so the Orange Bird, like they made a character costume for him, and so uh, he would come out and do meet and greets with guests <laughs> in, seen, in front of the Sunshine so Pavilion. Yeah. And then, yeah. um, and it, the character was used in the Florida Citrus Grows commercials. Um, mm. But then Anita Bryant kind of had some problems in the late seventies. Mm. Did it have to do with oranges? It had absolutely nothing to do with oranges, <laughs> and so. <laughs> So they kind of um, quietly uh, did away with her <laughs> and and the Orange Bird, too, because she's the one singing right. the Orange Bird song. Right, right, right. So, so he kind of went away in the late late 70s, early 80s. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, okay. so in 2012, when, you know, he made his, his return, um, they made a Triumphant. big deal of having mm-hmm. the Sunshine Tree Terrace. You know, like that's where you could get your citrus swirl, and that was that was the idea of that sunshine tree terrace. Is the citrus growers would they would come up with all kinds of different citrus concoctions mm. over the years to sell. You know, from right. juice to you know other things. So anyway, but the citrus swirl is the thing that really kind of stuck. Mm. And um, but you know that's way in the back, and and you yeah. know it's it's fairly. You can accommodate a lot of lines and everything else. Well, so I would say, I, I, I don't have it in front of me, but like in 2014, maybe, they swapped the location of Sunshine Tree Terrace and the uh, what's it, Aloha Isle Refreshments. Mm-hmm. Um, just swapped the names, basically. But they did it so that the Dole Whip people would have more room to wait in line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I back. think more people... Yeah, more people are going to get those anyway. Exactly. So, so you're telling me that moved three years ago and like, because I even asked a cast member and he was mm-hmm. very, he just nice, because they're doing some, some construction on that little one. What would you say it's called? Aloha something, something? I think, uh, well, which one? The one you initially the one by went to? The, the one by the, on the way to the hub. The one on the Oh, yeah, side. that's, well, that's now the Sunshine Tree Chatters. Right, okay. So, yeah, so they have, it's like, uh, not boarded up, but they have like a, a false facade mm-hmm. on it right now because they're doing some construction or something. So yeah. the guy told me that they weren't selling there then because of this construction, but you, what oh, you're telling no. me is that they actually, it actually moved years ago. Yeah, they, yes, they do not sell the Dole Whips there anymore. Oh, okay. See, now I, see, that would have been helpful to me to know that. So they're all back by the uh, the Tiki Room then? Over yes, by that, that they room. are. The Dole Whips yeah. are back there. Okay. I'm In fact, the last time I went, went, that's where we got our Dole Whip. Mm, so, okay. and the last time we went to Disney World was uh, 2015. So it was at least before 2015. Or wow. So, wow. You need to make another trip back here. I do, and I will in 18 days. <laughs> but but who's counting? Me. Well, cool. Well, was it? Do you have more? I don't want to cut you off. That is it. More? That uh, okay. that is it for the. That's fascinating. The well, I feel I feel I underappreciated that attraction now. So, uh, so yeah, nice. it definitely is a. Uh, no, okay, so you you 
you told a little history about you um, and the <laughs> Tiki Room. I, I yeah. quite honestly, growing up, I think because it was an e-ticket, my yeah. my dad, we did it once when yeah. I was a kid, and I yeah. don't think he ever wanted to spend another e-ticket on it. Yeah, because you're like, if I could do that or a Space Mountain, I mean. Right. Yeah. So I so I, I grew up with a fairly negative view of the Tiki Room. We would make fun mm-hmm. of it and everything else. And so it really <laughs> wasn't until I moved there and we started going to it before 1998. Mm. Um, it was like, oh, hey, this isn't that bad. I don't know what I was thinking. Right. Um, and then over the years, I've read, you know, I've read so much about it and and um, and realized, oh, wow, that like it's a significant attraction. Yeah. Um, hmm. So you, So you were probably pretty pretty well irritated when they make that change, huh? Because I didn't know you oh, I then, hated so. it, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was awful. Just even knowing nothing about it, even if you hadn't seen the original show, it, that, it was just an awful show. Yeah, it was. Yeah, just not well done. It, it's like it's like Stitch's Greatest Escape, right? I mean, no, it's, it it's just an awful yeah. show. That's a different show, but okay. <laughs> That's a different podcast. It is, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay, well, cool. Yeah, so I, I would bet it's a fairly overlooked attraction because it's kind of... Yeah, it's yeah kind of, and, I mean it's there, but it's kind of stuck over there, and like yeah. you know, I don't know, it's it's not um, it's not in your face like uh, I don't know Buzz right. Lightyear or something. But um, but the other yeah. nice thing about it is it is air conditioned, yeah, <laughs> and no it kidding. is a nice place to escape the heat, and it yep. usually doesn't have a long wait. So nope, um, that's, that's exactly one of the reasons we did, well <laughs> part of the, you know the family saw it and said hey what is that but but also because yeah. we had just waited in line for the Aladdin carpet ride thing and oh, it yeah. was hot and we did that so we we're like hey let's duck in here yeah yeah if you do if you do um a little request for our listeners though if they do go into the attraction when they say no flash photography please <laughs> please listen because when i was there this woman I, she apparently didn't know what that meant or uh, how to turn it off on her phone and it's just like that attraction especially because she sat because it's it's a like a circular seating right you're all yes, sitting, around, sitting around the birds so she sat directly across from us oh, so good. she's taking the picture but so basically the flash like right in our eyes in of this course. in this nearly completely dark room you know ah <laughs> uh, that's right that makes me nuts but i'm gonna yeah. imagine anybody listening to this they, they don't uh, they don't have to no, deal with that. But. they no they all have way too much sense to ever use a flash in it. <laughs> I, I will admit that one time, and I, I don't know if it was with it. Yeah, I guess it was with my phone. I didn't realize that it was because I usually set flash to off all the time, but I guess sure. it had been on auto and it went off and I, I felt like such a jerk. But anyway. I did that once too at Universal last yeah. year and I felt like the biggest heel. Yeah, on it's, uni- it's universal though. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that was like I said, that was particularly bad because you you face each other, right? If it's just yeah, you, no, you know, that's all. Like yeah, but anyway, but yeah, I was surprisingly delighted by the ride or good. attraction. That's so, good for yeah. you. So I'll go back. Yeah, going in with whatever. an open mind. <sighs> yeah, that's me, Mister Open Mind. Okay, all right. I like this. That's my new favorite corner. Remember the magic corner. Good, good. I'm t- but I'm it's to, a I, lot more I, work on my part, so. Yeah, that's why I like it. As long as I people just get like to, it. <laughs> I get to sit here and go, really? I didn't know that. Really? Picks of the week. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, all right. Mine's a, mine's a simple little pick. I don't know if this will matter to anybody, but, but uh, you know, I, I I think the point of these picks is we try to try to find things we do that, that are good all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that we use a lot and, you know, I get value out of, right? Yes. So. All right, so I, you know, I used to be primarily uh, using uh, using the Mac computers in yeah. uh, most of the things I would do, the Macintoshes, sure. and um, but lately for for lots of reasons that are uh, best left for other podcasts, um, mm-hmm. I've been using uh, Windows more and more. I wouldn't say you know Switch. I I have too many computers to say Switch, but um, but anyway, built into to Mac OS is this feature which I use all the time, which is to take screenshots. Which I, I'm imagining you know, but most people don't know this. Like it's like a like a four key combination and you can either do a full screenshot of what's on your screen or you can do a little window and you can either copy that to the clipboard or you can, you know, save it to a file. Right. You know what I'm talking about? It's like the control alt shift four thing, whatever that is. Yeah. So I, when I switched to windows, it was like, there's like nothing like it's not built in. It's like, ah, windows. And, you know, so I went on this hunt and, um, I was going to say I found it, but I actually think, uh, uh, a friend of mine actually found it and and uh, pointed me to it. It's a uh, it's called ShareX, which is an absolutely horrible name for what it does. Um, sounds like some sort of porn app or whatever. But this thing is like screenshots, like 
that's overused phrase on steroids, but it's like you can define all kinds of destinations. Like, okay, when I take a screenshot, save it to my Dropbox and copy it to my clipboard and put it up on uh, Instagram and blah, blah. I mean, you could have all these little workflows basically with it. So mm-hmm. um, now I've become adapted to where I love this tool even more than what I liked so much about uh, what was in on the Mac side. So now when I ever switch back to Macs, I'm like, oh, I need to find something like ShareX for, for Macs. So it's just, uh, you know, it's not a huge thing. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, for those of you that uh, worry about price or whatever, it's, uh, I think it's open source. Uh, if not, it's a free application. Uh, and it's just, it's phenomenal. So um, I'll send you the link to put in the notes, but uh, ShareX is what I call it, S-H-A-R-E-X. And it's a phenomenal thing. It's great. Use cool. it for you Windows people. Yeah, I have been... Uh... You what? Working on other stuff. As soon as you said Windows, I tuned out. <laughs> now, come on, I know, I know you have. I'm Windows joking. No, well. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, you watch. Tides are turning, my friend. Uh, no, actually, you know, it's funny because uh, just at work the last week, somebody was asking, "Man, how do you take a screenshot with your cursor in it in a certain place?" Yep. And yep. Well, this will do it. Like you have your cursor wherever you do the little key right. combination, and it freezes your cursor there. And then, so you can do a little a region selection if you just want that, or the full the full screen, or you know, yeah. yeah well, there you go. So I can tell I can my tell my that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. My got? pick is um, I've been listening to podcasts more and more. Um, <laughs> okay. And I've been listening to them uh, while I uh, do yard work, uh, which mm-hmm. is usually. Uh, this week it took almost three hours because I hadn't cut it in, in, in oh my, cut my grass in like two and a half weeks because we've had so those... much rain and everything. Are you using it for like one of those um those those push things from the forties that just kind of like <laughs> spun around? No, I got a, the, there's a lot of grass to cut. So anyway, <laughs> so so while I'm listening to uh, these podcasts, uh, I in the past I've uh, had just I've, I've I'm an earbud. Not like I've tried mm. so many different earbuds, um, mm. but my favorite, what's becoming my favorite company, <laughs> Anchor, yeah, ha- oh, yeah, has they. I bought these um, according to Amazon. I bought these on March sixth of this year, <laughs> and they're twenty dollars. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right, twenty one dollars, and mm-hmm. they are um, Bluetooth headphones, uh, earbuds mm. uh, okay. that fit in your ear. They have a microphone. Um, uh, in line, so you can okay. you know you can take phone calls with it or whatever. Um, but these things, and they have a little piece that hooks into your ear. You know, like they they don't mm-hmm. just go in. So so if you're, they're made for, uh, you know, they're really made for sporting or or whatever. But anyway, so these twenty one dollar, uh, earbuds are awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, twenty they, bucks, huh? <laughs> yeah. Why? What? Well, generally for audio gear, twenty dollars isn't exactly the the price point you consider to get quality. Stuff. Right, right, so. but but it's now now. Granted, I am listening to podcasts. I'm not listening yeah, to no, music. Fine. I'm not an audiophile. I do have mm-hmm. the lawnmower running, so I, I <laughs> listen to them. And, but they stay in my ears. They don't come out, even as I'm sweating and everything else. Um, they go. The wire goes behind my neck. the The battery lasts. Um, I mean, it, it lasts for hours. Like, I'll use them for multiple times over weeks before I have to recharge mm-hmm. them. Um, so, anyway, so if you're in the market for a uh, nice pair of Bluetooth earbuds that are fairly cheap that you can just throw in your bag, whatever, if you're working out or whatever, um, give these a try. Mm-hmm. I'll put the link in the show notes. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, gosh, I'm always looking for, I, I bought so many bad, inexpensive uh like earbuds and stuff. Yeah. You were, and, and that's you were the using other thing. The, the LGs before though, right? You, so you're not using those anymore? The, the little, little um, wraparound? No. Thing? No, I don't use those for, for no. Because that's another heavy piece of something that's around my neck that would just make heavy. me it's sweat like, more. It's like you know what I mean? Ounces, Glenn. I know, but it's a, it's a solid yeah, piece, yeah. you know. Yeah. So no, I don't. Hmm. But Okay. So anyway, so these are... Um, uh, so that's the other thing is they stay connected. Like yeah. I connect, they connect, I turn them on, they automatically connect to my phone. Like I don't really even have to do anything. Like uh, some of the other ones, it's like, ugh, you have to repair them and all this. Right, I haven't right, had right. that problem. They, they just work. Right. Right. So. Yep. 
I've had I've had great I've had great experience with Anchor products. I've got like various oh, yeah. chargers and batteries yeah. and things. I was assumed. Do, do you know the background of Anchor? It's a yeah. Well, um, yeah. I read something recently. They they started uh, down one path, and just to make uh, a certain and I forget what it was, but they don't really even make that anymore. And they transitioned to really starting out making um, basically batteries for yeah phones and everything else and they just they concentrated on that and they did a great job with it and so now they're yeah. expanding into different um accessories right i always thought they were like some no-name chinese company that just sort mm-hmm. of started making some good stuff but i think i heard recently it was like some executive from apple or google or somewhere that yeah. was like they were upset with the quality of usb cables or something exactly like that's that. what and, it was and, that's exactly what it yeah. was usb cable. Yeah, and so they started doing that so it's just uh just just weird and the great quality products that yeah. uh, you know that don't cost a, a fortune so right yeah, I, I gosh anything i've gotten with an anchor demo it's been great yeah. uh a-n-k-e-r right yes yeah. a-n-k-e-r yeah cool see i knew you had a good pick yeah. all right cool mm-hmm. i think that's a show is that i think is that it is look at that Oof, I'm like, I'm another one in the can all the work all the work i had to do for this show <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us on another episode of Terrific Recordings of Nothing. Follow Chris on Twitter and Instagram at CB Gray and Glenn on Twitter and Instagram at Dizwiz. Follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Tron underscore FM and on Facebook at Terrific Recordings of Nothing. For all things related to the show, including show notes and links to connect with us, visit us at Tron.fm.